Have you ever uh, been accused of being the maker of RC Cola? <laughs> I, th- I th- believe I had a friend that used to call me RC Cola <laughs> yeah. back in the day. Uh, I have this thing with friends where every time they find out my name is Michael, mm. they always say the same thing. They go, oh, from now on, I'm going to call you Michael. Mm. And I go, no, you won't. <laughs> <laughs> and they go, like, yes, I will. And then the next day they go, hey, Ryan Woods. Uh, uh, <laughs> I, always, I always think that I, th- I feel like I'm not a Michael. Mm. I feel like I'd be like a Mikey. Mm. Or like a, I don't think I'd be a Mike either. I don't think I'd pull it off. We but should. Maybe are you, are you recording? I've been recording for three minutes. Hi, uh, <laughs> welcome to the TNC Leader Podcast. Uh, today is January eighth, twenty twenty three, and on the TNC Leader Podcast, we have Ryan Costello. Thanks for having me. Not Michael. Well, technically, yes, but let's get into it. Let's debate. <laughs> let's debate, everyone. Okay. Uh, Ryan or Michael, what do you, when you wake up in the morning? You know, I, I feel like a Ryan today. Feeling like a Ryan today. Yeah. Not P. Diddy, not Michael. No. no. Okay. <laughs> my my full name is Michael Ryan Costello. We were talking about this before. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I was I was born with the plan being that my name was going to be Ryan. Mm-hmm. I was born and my parents said he looks a lot like his dad, mm-hmm. who is named Michael, and they were both for some reason, surprised by this enough to say, like, well, we'll just name him Michael as a joke, but we'll call him Ryan because that was our plan. Mm. So I've been Ryan ever since. I as feel a like joke. A lot, a lot, as a joke. I feel like a lot of middle name children, because there are a lot of people that go by their middle names, and I feel like they're in similar predicaments where the parents have a fun idea, and then you spend the rest of your life when teachers call roll, they go, oh, Michael, and they go, oh, no, it's actually Ryan. Well, how did you get there? And then you have to tell the story. It's very exhausting. So I hope I'm gonna copy and paste this part of the interview. And mm-hmm. I'm just gonna send it to everybody that I know. Yeah. So everyone knows, and I never have to do it again. I hope that works out for you. We'll see. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. Yeah. That um, that makes uh, a lot of sense. I think in eighth grade I tried to go by CJ. Did you? Cody Justin. Oh. Uh, CJ. And, and Justin is your middle name. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Never tried yeah. to go by Justin, but I definitely. Uh, my next door neighbor is um, one of the dad of the family of my next door neighbors. I was about to say his dad, but mm-hmm. they're all my neighbors. Um, he would always call me CJ after that, no oh. matter what he remembered. Mm-hmm. You know, I was like 17, 18. Mm-hmm. Like, What's up, CJ? I Did- think CJ's cool. I, I have a sister who's Caitlin Jean, and sometimes we call her CJ. Caitlin Jean. Yeah. Mm. You have a sister. <laughs> how how many siblings do you have? I have three sisters. You have three sisters? Mm-hmm. They're all younger. Megan, Caitlin, Ashlyn. Oh, Megan, Caitlin, Ashlyn. Mm-hmm. There's a trend wow. going on with ends. Ryan, Megan, Caitlin, Ashlyn, Michael. Michael. Um, that's <laughs> <laughs> you should that's go. Perfect. You should go as Michael Myers for Halloween one year. I should. Mm-hmm. It'd be uh, cool. Yeah. yeah. Awesome Everybody call you Michael costume. and you'd be like, yeah, Shrek. this is the only day. Yeah. yeah. Call me today. This is the only day you can say that. (laughs) I like it. I'll steal it. Yeah. And then become Ryan later. Just take it all off. (laughs) People are like, yo, did you see Mike Myers was here? And I'll be like, I don't know who that is. I'm not a fan of Austin Powers. Sorry. No, sorry about that. This interview is going off great. I think we've talked about absolutely nothing. That, no, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> that's completely fine. Maybe you could tell us uh, a little bit about yourself besides your full name. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> Never. Uh, yeah, just just a brief little like intro. Sure. The short list of everything. Short list of everything. Okay, I'll try to yeah. remember. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense, right? Yeah. That's yes. not an oxymoron. So, so my name is Ryan Costello. I go by he/him pronouns. I am very newly. Uh, I've just turned 30 years old, oh. uh, and I've grown this mustache to celebrate. Mm-hmm. Um, I started my career as an artist uh, at my – so my mother used to teach uh, dance classes, like pop dance classes for mm-hmm. younger children. And I would have to go to these classes um, so somebody would watch me, and it was my job to play – press play on a boom box – Nice. So the children could dance. And I was in maybe the fourth grade, fifth grade. And it got to the point where uh, she felt very bad for me. And she says, like, here's the deal. You could either join this class and you could be in the dance class too, or you could go across the hall where 
uh, they're teaching improv. Mm. And I said, I don't know what improv is, but uh, that I can't dance. So I'm going to do that. <laughs> and I went to this improv class. It was led by uh, an actress that is still in the community today. Her name is Jennifer Ray. Mm. And uh, I was introduced to what is essentially live comedy. Uh, and I immediately fell in love with it. I still remember like my first big laugh that I got in like a performance setting from like the showcase of like that little like children's thing. And it was such a good feeling. Like I held on to that. Mm -hmm. I, and I kind of chased that, uh, started doing drama in middle school and high school and which turned into, uh, me going to Southern Oregon university for theater. Um, then I came back here. I was dating my now wife, mm -hmm. um, and we decided to move back, try to find our roots, and um, and I fell in with the community theater program and the film program here, and I've I've been here ever since. I'm very happy to be here. Uh, recently, just before the pandemic, we were able to do something called Improv Olympics, which is an event run by mm -hmm. Reno Improv, and I had a little team together. And it was a lot of fun for me because I hadn't seen Jennifer Ray uh, for years and years, like since that class. And she was on, we were on the Renal Theater team and she was on the Bruca team. So we got to do improv together, which was nice. like a really nice, like full circle moment for me. So yeah. So it's been very fun ever since. And he lived happily, happily ever, ever after. And after. I never did a thing since. And that's it. That was the end of the story. That's so. What do you want to know? Goodbye. Yeah. Um. Uh. More than that. I mean, like, so. Uh. When you were at Southern Oregon University, mm -hmm. was that the one? Yes. You studied theater. I studied theater arts and political science. Theater arts and political science. I did. Yes. Why uh, political science coupled with that? Uh, politics was always something that I had an interest in. Um, I wanted to. Uh. I, there was a time in my life where I said, well, it might be fun to go into like joining like a campaign. Mm -hmm. And I've worked on a campaign since uh, coming back. I worked on one and kind of decided, you know, maybe it wasn't for me. I don't know if uh, that's in my future or not, mm. but it was always something that I had an interest in. So I wanted to chase it. And I'm glad I did. I learned a lot of interesting things and met a lot of interesting people. What about it might deter you? From returning, oh, going door to door to door and having doors slammed in my face, uh, and uh, getting on the phone and having people tell me why uh, my candidate was a socialist communist that never uh, should be, <laughs> 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 even though they would have like no basis in reality at all. Um, yeah, but uh, but for the same reasons, you meet a lot of interesting people mm -hmm. and uh, you get to do a lot of interesting things. Mm -hmm. um, and I and I still love that world. Like this, there's all this stuff going on with like the Speaker of the House, and I, um, I felt like I was going around to everyone I know and going like, "This is so interesting. Like they have to keep voting because of this." And people around me were going like, "Okay, like all right, calm down, Ryan. <laughs> it's all right. It just seems like a normal thing." No, this hasn't happened in like a hundred years. Like, I don't know. I just love this stuff. <laughs> It hasn't happened in 100 years. <laughs> 100 you years understand. to the day. And yeah. you don't understand, you fools. <laughs> That's, um, I didn't know that about you. I mean, yeah. Uh, I was about, I was going to guess that you had had maybe like a, a writing background because you're a writer. That's the thing. Is like, so you're, you're an actor, mm -hmm. yes, and improv, yes, comedy. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's interesting. The first time I met you, actor, mm -hmm. but then I feel like I, that quickly shifted in my mind to uh, writer mm -hmm. um, within mostly probably because of COVID. I feel like if COVID never happened, we probably would have ended up doing a show or something. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because I was definitely like on that track of doing a lot more theater then. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, like wh when did you get into writing? I started writing uh, like late high school because mm. uh, we would do, I don't know if you ever did Thespian Festival. Yeah, the, the, yeah, like the international yeah. one that it was in it was in Nebraska when I was in high school. It was still in Nebraska when we were there and yeah. and we started writing um and we we got really into the idea of like doing our own one acts and mm -hmm. like my myself and my group of friends doing our own one acts, doing our own uh, short films. Yeah. And actually um and my senior year I wrote 
and directed my my first play hmm. that I've ever done. Um, and I really loved getting to do that and kind of learning like the mechanics of how it worked. It was also the year that uh, Jared Lively and I, who's also a mm-hmm. local talent, mm-hmm. um, we wrote uh, a short film that actually won the International Thespian Festival that year in mm. 2011. Um, and went to college. And in college, there was a playwriting course that I was really interested in, but I was a little young for it. So I had to kind of put together like a resume of um, – you know, some of my work that I've done, like including the play that I wrote in mm-hmm. high school and I was able to get into the program. And that's where I wrote my second play. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was a play called Cody Stanfield. I know you stole my Game Boy Color in the third grade and now the world does too. <laughs> <laughs> and my uh, favorite thing about <laughs> my favorite thing about that is, uh, so we did that piece. Uh, that was, I produced that with a friend of mine, Matt Beatart. And we wound up, uh, doing that is kind of like a senior, like going away. We put this play on, and the response to this around like our uh, arts community, like in our college, uh, wound up being very positive. So much so that two years later, um, there was a director from OSF, somebody that I really respect, mm-hmm. uh, David Kelly. Mm-hmm. He was an actor for the Oregon Shakespeare Festival. He came back and he directed another production of it um, that was part of like the winter season of SOU. Um, and there were actors from that production that went on to the Oregon Shakespeare Festival. And when you look at their at the playbills of like all the actors in OSF, their biographies are always a little longer because they put, oh, and I played this person in Cody Stanfield. I know you stole my Game Boy Color in the third grade. Now the world does too, which is a lot of fun for me. <laughs> um, <laughs> so since then, I uh, I've I've done like online courses with Second City. Uh, I have a lot of writer friends, so doing scripts back and forth. Um, and when I got back, one of my big things was I really wanted to get into screenwriting. So I, I took a chance at it, and I had one in my back pocket that I would worked on for a while, and I didn't really have anywhere to put it. When I got here, I got to know enough people that I eventually um, got in with Comedy Collective, mm-hmm. which is an improv troupe that was led by Emily Skyle. Yep. I met her and learned about the Cordillera Film Festival, which I know that we've mm-hmm. both attended. Yep. Um, and I realized, oh, there's a film festival here. And I was like, well, I'll just turn to my thing. I go, it probably takes place in like some bar somewhere. And so maybe I'll like win a free drink. And as we both know, it wound up being this really big, cool event mm-hmm. that's in our town. Um, and I was able to get into that festival and get into that world, which is how I um, – I, I've – known Courtney from other things too, but mm-hmm. we started working together a lot from that. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, I've been working on things on and off ever since. Writing's a lot of fun. Uh, I always like writing things with human elements that also can be very zany and out there and unlike other things. Mm-hmm. Yes, you do. Yeah, 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 I do. You're a great writer. Um, uh, we wrote a thing or We two. did, yeah. Uh, which are now sitting in a bank of things and being Absolutely. talked about, just so you know. So we, can we talk about that? Yeah, we could talk. Yeah. We could talk. Well, uh, so the experience that I have with Ryan, the bigger experience, we wrote a, a few scripts, two, two, two. Uh, yeah, two short two films. Short two short films, yeah. Mm-hmm. And one of them, uh, the bigger one is called Half Shelled, mm-hmm. and it is the story of Chuck Lorre, mm-hmm. who is a TV producer who before he was a famous pr- TV producer of like Two and a Half Men and Big Bang Theory and shows like that, he uh, was a showrunner and a writer and uh, and he played the piano and he was a musician. He wanted to be a musician. And so he really wanted to write the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle theme song, mm-hmm. uh, got denied, and then it came down to The Wire, and they hired the Turtles to do it, and the, the band, the Turtles, they didn't do it. Mm-hmm. And so this script that we wrote, which is was your idea, this was your idea, um, was about the experience of him writing this song with no time, with 24 mm-hmm. hours notice to write it in a studio, which mm-hmm. he had to be in there all night <laughs> to do mm-hmm. with his friend. Um, and kind of just like flashbacks to why he's there and and why he's getting it. And then in the end, it's just like so sim. It's just the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle theme mm-hmm. song. It's so simple. I love that script. 
it's it's a fun story. Mm-hmm. I, I was really proud of it when uh I I'd love to dig into some of the licensing adventures that we had, if that's okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. So my favorite thing about that is we had the script mm-hmm. and we were getting kind of serious about producing it. And it was during COVID. Mm-hmm. So we were kind of tiptoeing, but also taking our time mm-hmm. with certain things. And we realized that because, you know, this is a uh this is a script about the creation of a song, we should explore and see like what we can do to get like the rights to the song to like use in the short film. So we contacted uh, Viacom, Mm -hmm. which is the current owner of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Mm -hmm. licensing behind that. And, uh, and I expected to like send something in the mail and like never hear from them again. Mm -hmm. And what happened was like an email chain that just went constantly back and forth. Like, what is this for? Like, does Chuck Lorre know about this? Like, can you give us, like, a synopsis of what we're doing? Like, what is this exactly? Like, they were very confused about what this was. And we explained it, and then they finally gave us, like, the options, and they gave us price. So mm-hmm. in, it was something that we could have done. That I couldn't afford. Because <laughs> I'm broke. <laughs> but, you know, maybe we'd be able to fund for it. Uh, but it was, We could in but the future. But there was an option to do it. Mm-hmm. And then the other thing was that we had in our script, we had a fun gag because... Chuck Lorre was also fired. Part of his tragic backstory, and this is true, is that he was fired from the Muppet Babies television show. Yeah, that was that was. Yeah, I yeah. remember this part. He was he was a writer. <laughs> he was a writer for the Muppet Babies, and uh, they told him that he's not good enough to write for the Muppet Babies, mm-hmm. and that was part of like his tragic backstory, which is according to a vanity card that he always wrote at the end of Two and a Half Men. Like that is a true story. Mm-hmm. Um. And we had a gag that might have been your idea, but we had a gag where he sadly uh, sings the Muppet Babies theme yep, song yep. on the piano because <laughs> yep. he's thinking about this. And Disney owns the Muppet Babies. Yep. And we immediately, I think, I want to say, like, that Viacom emailed thread, like, that was the course of, like, a few weeks. Mm-hmm. Disney was like, hey, can we, like, do this? And within, like, an hour, it's like, no. Yep. Absolutely not. You can't have Muppet Babies. Yeah. Yeah. You, you can't have a man's Which slip. was hilarious. Yes. <laughs> I'll never forget that. Muppet Babies? A sacred goat? How dare you? <laughs> There's a very, I think it's Forgetting Sarah Marshall, I think, uh, Jason Siegel yeah. sadly sings the Muppet Show theme song. That would make and sense. It, yeah. Yeah, that's, that sounds on brand for that mm-hmm. with the uh, vampire musical. Very yeah. Muppet-esque. Mm-hmm. Muppet, Muppet, Muppet. Muppet, Muppet, Muppet. Um, so, have you, in the future, like, what are your plans? I know I know you're a writer, you're an actor. We'll talk more about your acting mm-hmm. in a little bit. I'd like to uh, know your current things. But um, in the future, where do you see yourself going? In a town like Reno, where many people that I know, jacks of all trades, mm-hmm. you, no exception. Is there a specific type of uh, title or role? Uh, that you might be striving towards or uh, idea or vision for your future? I just I just like creating. I, I think, and, and we've talked about this before, but I, I think that we both like the idea of maybe building our town up a bit and being a part <laughs> of that. I, I met somebody at Cordillera last time I was there that told me, like, you know, uh, they said, you know, Reno to me uh, feels a lot like Portland 10 years ago Mm. Uh, just based on how we're kind of budding and going through that and I'd and I'd like to be a part of that so I'm I'm just gonna keep writing keep working with cool people and uh, keep doing acting gigs as I get them and and we'll see what comes of it but so far it's it's working out pretty well writer actor that's the that's the gig huh writer actor is the gig Mm -hmm. yeah if I could keep if I could keep that gig then and I'll be in good shape. I, I'm happy with where I'm at. Uh, you are acting right now uh, in in a show. What show is that? Where is it playing? Yes. So this is a this is at Reno Little Theater. It's opening on January 20th, and it's called Baskerville: A Sherlock Holmes Mystery. Mm. I'm very very excited about it. Uh, it's a really fun show. Uh, it's myself is Dr. Watson, and Rosie, uh, who's a brilliant actress. Uh, she's playing Sherlock Holmes. Mm-hmm. Uh, so us two, we play those two characters throughout the entire play. 
three other actors, Jim, Ian, and Katie, mm-hmm. they play everyone else, which is a cast of, I, I want to say, like, 40 characters. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they they have all these different dialects. They have all these different costumes. It's real. Rosie and I do all the work we can, um, but it's really their show. Uh, they just play around and watching them do their thing and watching the madness of it unfold is a lot of fun. It's directed by Chad Sweet, who's a good friend of mine, uh, who's a brilliant director, brilliant technical director, the work that he's done on our set, uh, the things that we do on our stage, I don't know if I've ever been done. Some of these things that we were doing, I don't know if we've ever seen done on an RLT stage before. It is an adaptation by Ken Ludwig, uh, of the original Hound of the Baskervilles, Mm -hmm. which is, I believe, the longest Sherlock Holmes story uh, about a uh, rich uh, manor owner Mm -hmm. who is killed in a small town in Devonshire, okay, uh, on a moor in Devonshire. Uh, His friend, who is a doctor, comes to Sherlock Holmes because he is convinced that the man was somehow killed by a mysterious, gigantic hound of legend. And it's up to Holmes and Watson to come to this town and solve the mystery so that the same thing doesn't happen to the heir of this man, a man named young Sir Henry Baskerville. Uh, It is uh, a comedy. It is a melodrama. It is terrifying. It has romance. It has everything that you would want in an evening of theater. And the cast is so, so very fun. And uh, I I do my best to uh, be up to their level. Um, But you watch for them. It's... It's a blast. I can't wait for it. A cast of five. A cast of five, playing a cast of, I want to say, 40 plus. 40 plus, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a, that's a lot. A lot of costume changes. Absolutely. Not for me. Not for you, though. No, I just, you just get there. to stay on stage and, mm-hmm. and uh, hope that they're going to make it. Uh-huh. They'll make it. They're, yeah. they're... It's a lot of fun for me to watch. You'll have to ask them if it's fun for them. <laughs> It's mar- those things are marathons. Those types oh, of shows, absolutely. marathon. Yeah, Have I you, think it's you've fun. done a show like that. Uh, Puffs was similar to that. That's true. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I uh, filled in for one of the roles. Did you? Uh, yeah, I I played Leanne in Puffs. Oh, did you? Yeah, I, I didn't did. Know that. I did on a Sunday. Oh, yeah. excellent. Uh, it was crazy. Yeah, mm-hmm. I had had somebody who uh, said they were going to do it, um, and. Part of it was that I, maybe I didn't have enough time to prepare them um, as well as I could have. And then part of it might have been that um, there it was just a lot, you know, so like a hundred page script and a lot of lines it's and stuff. Show. So yeah. I basically just like had a, a an epiphany, an idea, whatever, and was like, I'm just going to do it. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm just going to play it. I already know the show. I've watched it a million times. I can do this and I learned it in like three days. <laughs> and, I, and then I did it and it was a lot that I, would be a lot yeah, yeah I could feel I could feel what they felt when I watched uh, the hell week when everybody was getting all of the stuff like more fine tuned mm-hmm. it was just basically like run off stage make sure you have all of the props for the next thing make mm-hmm. sure you're in the right place because it was very farcical mm-hmm. um, marathon that's yep. what I would say mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. I mean, I mean, we've we've both done noises off was almost similar, similar where you just have to keep track of everything because if you go on stage and you and you don't have like one prop or you miss one cue, like the entire thing falls apart. Yeah. Oh God. Yeah. I can't imagine. At least we had like such a, a brilliant group to be able to do that. That was show. a fun group. Yeah. yeah. Just everybody was uh, a really talented mm-hmm. actor. Uh, crew member, what have you, yeah. in that group. That was that was one of those groups where every now and then you, and I I think this actually happens for me a lot. But I I love the cast where I walk in and I go like, I I need to catch up with these very very good people and do as best as I can. And that's a show I felt like that with in Baskerville is a show that I feel that way. Well, I mean, Ian is, was in both of them. Yes, right. Ian Sorensen, who's he's kind of funny, a little. Yeah, I don't know. You know, yeah, I, I think they he, say I think that he about said him. a joke or two. Yeah, yeah, I heard he's he's all right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's fine. You know, he's he can fine. maybe get up in front of a mic and stand there. The other the other day we were talking about this. Like somebody went, he's so funny, and they went, he's no Jeff Dunham. You know, <laughs> I, uh... <laughs> but he's no Jeff Dunham. 
Is not Have you ever guy. seen him pull out a puppet? No, no puppets. No puppets. Ian's great. Ian's super talented. Ian's very talented. Mm-hmm. He has a. We we did improv together for a few years. Actually, I think maybe one year. Um, and I had to throw at him. We were we were playing a game where we were in a line and we had to throw people like where you're like telling a story, and in improv it's called pimping where you kind of give them a challenge like and then in the story like they had to do this and it went like this, and so you give them something like and they had like no arms and they did like this accent, and I threw him something just on a whim where I was like and he, uh and I watched Toy Story and I uh and I watched like an X rated Toy Story. And it went like this. And then Ian goes on, and that son of a... He has, like, a perfect impression for every character in Toy Story. <laughs> and I was like, I didn't know that you had that. How do you have that? Why do you have that? <laughs> it's like a perfect John Ratzenberger voice. Like, who has that? Ian has that. Ian has That's that. That's why he's brilliant. <laughs> he sits at, at home studying. <laughs> studying ham and Religiously. Toy Story. Yeah. 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 And he's... And, there have been many moments like that. I, I really love our entire cast of Baskerville. They've all had moments uh, where they've just blown me away with their instincts and their talent. It's always nice to be in a group like that. It is very nice. What is um, What would you say is your favorite rendition of Sherlock Holmes? My favorite rendition of Sherlock Holmes, because I did a deep dive on it. I didn't know very mm. much going in about Sherlock Holmes outside of just like the basics, the deerstalker cap. Um, he solves mysteries. He is not real. End of list. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. Uh, and so I and so I started exploring, and I found this movie called The Private Life of Sherlock Holmes, which is a Billy Wilder movie that was originally supposed to be four hours long. The studio made him cut it down to two. He said it's his lost masterpiece. Mm. Um, and it's a film that explores the stories of Sherlock Holmes that... Uh, would have been too scandalous at the time they were written, but now that Watson and Holmes are long dead, now we can finally share them. Scandalous. And they explore questions of uh, Sherlock's sexual orientation, uh, his feelings on women, his relationships with women, his relationship with Watson, Um, and I think it's a brilliant movie. I think that, especially if you're a cinemaphile, I, I think it's definitely worth checking out. The um, Private Life of Sherlock the private Holmes. Private Life of Sherlock Holmes, directed by Billy Wilder. Um, it also has a, I won't go into it, but there, there are deleted scenes that you could find online, and there's one in particular about Holmes and Watson on a cruise ship mm-hmm. that I think is very, very fun. Mm-hmm. Um, and then outside of that, I really like the, I, like, I do like the BBC Sherlock. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that Martin Freeman, I think, might be my favorite Watson. Nice. I think Martin Freeman is very underrated as a modern actor. Um I, I'm a big fan of Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Nice. There's a bit in like the first book mm-hmm. where, because uh, in the in the movie Martin Freeman plays like Arthur Dent, mm-hmm. and there's a bit w- in the book where they describe a look that he has that was uh, equal parts joy and terror, mm. and you watch that movie and at that part he gives that look. That's an actor. That's so, hard. Yeah. Yeah, but I I like the films where Watson is portrayed as like a an everyman who's very impressed mm. with uh, this incredible person and knows like this guy is incredible. Um, why can't everyone else see that? <laughs> and I and I really enjoy that take on the character, mm. which I think the Martin Freeman one does. Yeah, I mean, well, Sherlock Holmes is. Uh, is it that he is so they're they're in so intelligent that they can be off putting because of that? There's it, a certain it depends on portrayal to portrayal, but if you I mean, um, you know, he's he's a morphine addict. He's he uses mm-hmm, cocaine, mm-hmm. he um he's something of a recluse. Mm-hmm. Uh, the I famously when Watson meets Sherlock, uh the first thing that he finds him doing is he's testing weapons on corpses in a morgue. I believe, Mm -hmm. Um, which I think people, I think realistically people would find strange and maybe Mm -hmm. off-putting. And, but Watson sees the brilliance of him. And there's, there's like a quote from Watson that uh, uh, Sherlock Holmes often is like a machine without a heart. 
mm. the way that he approaches cases. And I think every now and then he sees the thump, uh, which which I think is really cool. Mm. I think Sherlock Holmes is cool. <laughs> put, that, <laughs> put that on your quote. I think Sherlock Holmes is neat. I think he's I think he's fun. I think it's fun. What's your least favorite rendition of Sherlock Holmes? I don't have a Sherlock Holmes portrayal that I don't like. Mm. I would actually of of the Sherlock Holmes I've seen, I would actually rank Rosie very high. Mm. I think Rosie the things that she's doing with her with her character and the things that she's finding with it. I think that's a lot of fun to watch for me. Um, and I think that's a, very true to who the character is. But I would say my least favorite Watson uh, is Nigel Bruce. Not because he's doing anything that is bad, but because it's so very against what Watson is in the book. Mm. Nigel Bruce was the first person to play uh, Watson like a major Sherlock Holmes motion picture. Um, if you picture who Dr. Watson is, you might picture Nigel Bruce. He's a somewhat overweight man uh, who's a little uh, silly and maybe a little dim. Um, and there's no reason he should be friends with Sherlock Holmes because Sherlock Holmes is the smartest man in the room. And in, in these this series of films, Watson is often the dumbest. Hmm. There's, a, there's a film called The Woman in Green where... Uh, Moriarty Moriarty goes to Sherlock and says, you know, if you if you don't do this, I'm going to kill like Doctor Watson. And mm -hmm. Moriarty leaves, and uh, Sherlock goes to Watson. He goes, you know, Moriarty came by. He said he was going to kill a doctor by the name of John Watson. And Watson goes, Watson, what? But that's me. I don't like it. <laughs> so. <laughs> But he's he can also wow. be very funny. So no disrespect to Nigel Bruce. I just that's not the Watson that I wanted to do. You know what that reminds me of? Hmm. The movie version versus the book version mm -hmm. of Ronald Weasley from Harry Potter. Ah, that's a very good point. Yeah. Yes. Very yes. much reminds me of how mm -hmm. you're you're describing it, at least in the books. I mean, like there Ron is technically a sidekick character in a way. He's not the protagonist, mm -hmm. but he's he's so much smarter. He's not, he's just not the, the dumb mm -hmm. reactionary. Oh my God, we shouldn't be here person, which mm -hmm. is what he is in the movie. In the movie, he, there's like an aura of naivete almost that just comes out of nowhere, mm -hmm. which is like, I think it's either a really lazy choice as, as a, uh, an actor or, the most insanely hard choice possible because if, if it's lazy, then it's just going to come off as you're dumb, you know, and dim witted and what have you. But on the other end of it, if you can like have it as a layer, you know what I mean? As like, that's not really who the person is maybe, or like they are uh, kind of like um, Vicky in noises off, mm -hmm. you know, like that, that character I find to be, uh, you could play it in a way where like she would be really, really smart on stage and then play it like dim witted when it goes to her natural self. Mm -hmm. Right. Stuff like that. Um, I don't know. What, what do you, what do you think? I think there's, I think there's somewhat, maybe some merit to it, especially because the Harry Potter series is a film series. Like they started out as family films. Mm. So I understand like maybe coming in with somebody that's more of a comic relief and maybe leaning into that differentiating him, differentiating him from Harry because you have a film you only have so much time in a book you could go into all like the eccentricities of like who this character is and, um, but it can be frustrating mm -hmm. if you're a fan of the books because I'm also a fan of the books mm -hmm. um, I always I always think back to do you know the story of like uh, the kids getting cast in those movies and writing the essays uh, I don't know that story no. so the three main children we're all asked by the director of the film to write essays about their characters. Mm -hmm. And Daniel Radcliffe wrote an essay and Emma Watson wrote an essay and Rupert Grint did not. And they go, why didn't you do it? And he goes, because Ron wouldn't, he would be, he would be too, <laughs> he'd forget. <laughs> <laughs> Which is fun. That is fun. Maybe it's not a lazy choice. Maybe that's a, a heart, a harsh word, but I feel like it, 
it can be perceived that way if there's not more depth. Well, of course, especially if you're a fan of that character. Mm-hmm. Um, and me, like I was, I was reading these books and I was like, you know, Watson, like, you know, he's like, he's a good man. And, and I think that, I think that also the reason people might perceive Watson to not be intelligent is because he's standing next to Sherlock Holmes. And there was somebody, I, I read like reviews of Sherlock and somebody said, um, somebody said like in a perfect Sherlock Holmes story, Watson is a little slower than the reader Mm. because maybe like the reader would like catch on to things that Watson doesn't. And that way Watson is asking questions and focusing on the wrong thing, which makes him, which makes the story, uh, more engaging. Um, and maybe you won't see the twists coming because you're seeing things from Watson's point of view. But I don't, I don't think that he is like, I don't, Watson, that's me. <laughs> I, I think that's a little harsh. Yeah, I am. Um, I, I guess this makes me think of is Watson, because Sherlock Holmes being the smartest man in the room, mm-hmm. person in the room, sure. But at the same time, I, I do have this philosophy of like everyone invests their time in different things, and you know that's what that's why we collaborate, why we have teams, because mm-hmm. uh, you can't do everything by yourself. It's just impossible. Yep. So, so in that regard, what skills do you think Watson has that, in uh, a pinch, Sherlock Holmes is going to be like, I got nothing. There's a there's a quote in our show. Uh, where Holmes relates Watson to uh, Falstaff and says that you are you are uh, you are not witty in yourself, but you are the cause of wit among men. Uh, where sometimes engaging with Watson and seeing the way that Watson thinks about things and seeing him go the wrong direction, uh, Holmes is able to say, "Well, why is that wrong? Oh, wait, it's because of this." Hmm. So there's that element, which is which is. <laughs> Not a very, maybe not a very nice thing to say, mm. uh, but I also think that Watson has a bit more social skills mm. than Holmes. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that, and, and I think that Watson does have like certain appreciation for, like, I think that Watson has an appreciation for the arts that uh, Holmes might not have outside of music. Mm. Um, Watson's also a doctor, so... Mm-hmm. He has that going for him. I'm, I'm sure I can make a list, mm-hmm. uh, but you'll watch the play and mm-hmm. and people will be like, Watson is the dumbest man in the room, mm-hmm. even if that's not... Uh, I, I don't think he's dumb, but I think he's surrounded by a very brilliant person. Mm-hmm. So Yeah, he's just not looking at those things. No. Y- yeah. No, he's, he's engaging in the world the way that somebody would. Yeah. <laughs> a normal person. Normal person. <laughs> not Sherlock Holmes. Yeah. Who normally is not liked, for sure. Yeah. Their affability of Watson is definitely uh, a huge element, for sure. Yeah. It's it's a fun one to engage in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, what, uh, are there any other shows that you're planning on, on doing this year or things you're writing or anything like that? We are starting production very soon on uh, writing the script for Shark, which is a Good Luck Macbeth parody show of dun, dun, the film dun, Jaws. Dun, 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 dun. That's coming up very soon. We have some fun ideas for that. Nice. Um, and then later in the year, I'm also working on another GLM show, uh, which is going to be Die Difficult, mm. which is a parody of Die Hard. Mm-hmm. Um, and outside of that, I have... Uh, I, I believe I hope I hope this year um, there's a f- short film that I worked on with Courtney last year called The Hero. Mm-hmm. I'm hoping there's a way that more people will get to see that this year. I saw it. You saw it? Yeah, I saw it. Oh, that's great. Yeah, I did see it. Yeah. Great job. Yeah, I Thank saw it at uh, uh, Mad Wife premiered Target List. Saw it that. Oh, Could, they played at Target List. Yeah, they oh, they great. had uh, a showing at Damani Ranch High School mm-hmm. a few weeks back, maybe, and. Um, we got there and we waited just a little bit because some people hadn't shown up. And then Andrew got up and he's like, while we're waiting, we could watch the hero. Oh, that's great. And we were like, yeah, sure. So yeah. we got to watch that and then immediately went into the target list. And uh, nice little 
little double feature. Oh, that's great. Little little snack before yeah. the main course. That was that was a really fun project to be involved in. Yeah. I really like doing that. Maybe you could tell people what the hero is about. Yeah. And um your involvement, what you did on on that project. Sure. The the hero is about a uh a teenager in high school mm-hmm. uh that uh happens to have Down syndrome. Mm-hmm. And he is dealing with a lot of things in his life. He's dealing with bullies. It's a, it's a family friendly short. Mm-hmm. Uh and he and he's dealing with a bully and the way that he kind of um escapes from the world is this comic book that he's writing about a superhero called Crossfade, mm-hmm. uh, which uh, who is portrayed as like this dashing, like able-bodied man, mm-hmm. and uh, he has an epiphany in a classroom that he has nobody uh, that he himself can look up to. There's nobody that he like relates to in his life, and as he starts to realize his own self-confidence. Uh, he starts to imagine the superhero in his comic book as being himself. Mm-hmm. Um, I I saw the premiere of that uh, with a group of children uh, that were connected to the Down Syndrome Aware- Awareness Network of Reno mm-hmm. or no- of Northern Nevada, and uh, I'll the turn of like because there's the superhero world and there's the the real world. Mm-hmm. And there's a moment where in the superhero world, the superhero, it pans over uh, to the villain and then it pans back to the superhero and it's him. Mm-hmm. And the audience just went crazy. And I'll, I'll never forget that feeling. Mm-hmm. I, I think that's a really fun vesting. I, I think that's a really fun, uh, really powerful project that I'm really proud of. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Easton Ray is the, the lead actor in that, and he's fantastic. And he's done like live events where he's dressed as the character, and mm-hmm. um, just just a wonderful, warm person. Yeah, and I don't know if you you said it, you wrote it. I, I was the writer of the film. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, and it was just writing. Did you show up? Uh, did you go to get to go to set any days or? I I showed up to set on like the coldest day of the set. Everybody <laughs> was like miserable. And I just wanted to stop by, and I, I just hung out with Courtney a bit, and mm-hmm. I and I saw Andrew do his thing, and mm-hmm. um, and I was there maybe an hour, mm-hmm. and I was like, it looks really good. Well, bye. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, that was that was a lot of fun. I was I was really uh, thankful for Courtney for thinking of me mm-hmm. because she was involved in the project, and they needed a writer, mm-hmm. and they didn't really have uh, like a solid idea for like what to do. They just knew they wanted to do something with Easton. Mm-hmm. And so she roped me in, and I met Easton, mm-hmm. um, and got to talking to him for a bit about his in, his interests and stuff. And all he told me was, um, uh, he 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 loves like action films, and he loves like Karate Kid and mm-hmm. uh, what's the Cobra Kai. Cobra Kai. Mm-hmm. Um, and and he was saying like, and if I and he's if I was a superhero, I'd want to teleport. Yeah, and like that. That's my thing. Like, and I and I have an idea of like you know how I would get like my teleporting powers and stuff like mm-hmm. that. And I said like, there's a really fun uh, story here. He also told me. I said, you know, uh, is is there something that it for people that may not understand like what Down syndrome is? Like, is there something that you would want people to know? And he said, and he told me. Um, he goes, I'm not uh, – he told he told me I'm not – something along the lines of uh, I'm not disabled. Like, you know, I'm mm-hmm. special. Mm-hmm. Like I – you know, I, I'm able to go through my life. There's just something special about me, mm-hmm. which is a line that uh, I also incorporated into the film when he does that turn. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, that – that project has a really p- close place to my heart. I'm really happy with how that turned out, and Madwife did an excellent job with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. I, you, you, so from conception and then mm-hmm. seeing it, like you, it was like you wrote it, you gave it away, mm-hmm. you got to peek in the kitchen for an hour when mm-hmm. it was really cold, yeah, and then uh, and then it was served. And mm-hmm. and what I, I mean, you say they did a really good job with it, yes, but. Mm-hmm. What is your perception from that to the release? Like, were there things in it that you're like, "Oh wow, they they put this in it. That's a nice addition," or like, "Oh, I never thought of that." Any type of thoughts like that? There are. There's always. I mean, there's always a fear. 
Mm. Um, you know, and I've I won't get into detail, but there have definitely been like times in my life where I've given somebody a script mm. and and they do something small scale with it and they go, Oh, like they missed like this beat and they missed like oh like that. Um and so going in like I had I had met I had I'd almost like never met mm-hmm. like some of these actors and uh, and I'd never worked with Mad Wife before, so I, I really had, like, no inkling of, like, the quality of work that mm-hmm. was going to go into it. But, I mean, uh, Justine and Courtney uh, mm-hmm. are two people that I trust. Yeah. And and I knew that Justine, who's the mother of Easton, like, I knew that she wasn't going to allow this project to be anything less than yep. uh, what it was. And um, I... I mean, the first the first thing that popped up to me was like the special effects of it, yeah, mm-hmm. which I thought were very impressive, and I went, "Oh, mm-hmm. like this is really cool." And they had a shot in the film, um, where and it, it might seem kind of small, but uh, there's a shot in the film where like the the bully of the film like takes one of Easton's drawings and like mm-hmm. throws it in the trash, and. Uh, everyone like goes to class and it really was just supposed to be of just Easton like picking the drawing out of the class just so we could go to like the next transition. Um, And there was a moment where like you saw like the class leaving and the shot just lingered on Easton for a while. Um, And I don't, and I don't know what it was, but like that moment made me go like, I think they did it. Like, I think this is really cool. Mm -hmm. Um, so I don't know. I I'm always I'm always very thankful for people that are more talented than me making my work uh, look a lot better. <laughs> more talented than you at different things. I don't think they're more talented than you. Well, I mean, I mean, well, the 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 people you're talking about are people like you know Justine, mm-hmm. uh, who is like a manager, an agent. Courtney, who is uh, a director, cinematographer. She's very. Uh, creative when it comes to ideas with stories i wouldn't mm-hmm. necessarily say i don't think she would call herself a writer but she, she is a concept she, she wouldn't and i would disagree with that i think we've had yeah <laughs> conversations she, about that yeah yeah mm-hmm. no seriously because yeah. she'll she's good at um the way she would put it is script consultant at least the last time i talked to her about it she was like i'm totally into like consulting scripts she's about mm-hmm. that editing side mm-hmm. and she's it. she's great eye for that too mm-hmm. and uh and then andrew cinematography mm-hmm. i mean uh directing mm-hmm. i, w- right? I want to i I'd like to shout out uh, MJ Palo too. And MJ, yeah. MJ was huge her, yeah. and like and, and she had tons of notes on uh the first draft of the script that were very mm-hmm. helpful. Especially yeah. with like um you know how it was structured and how mm-hmm. uh, it was formatted. I learned a lot working with MJ on this project. Yeah. Yeah. So like all of those people, every single one we just named, have their own skills that they're really good at. But at the end of the day, you're the writer. I, you, I was a writer. You were uh, you're a writer, but I mean like you, all of those people uh, weren't were involved before you were, and then they so they sought out you. I was I'm very thankful for that. Yeah, that's yeah. that's what I mean. Is like even if you're just a writer, I feel like you got that. You got the Spock, kid. <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate that. That's that's very sweet of you to say. Yeah, yeah. Well, I I just don't. I mean, um, there's there's. I humble I'm I humble myself too much sometimes when um, I'm talking to people I'll be like no no you know there's all these other people that made made it good as well and blah 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 um, and so when I see somebody else do it I instantly like hey stop that <laughs> <laughs> well I I feel the same way about you Cody I, I'm a very big fan of I, I think everything I've ever seen you do hey thanks yeah with yeah. some exceptions, but yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, some of it is dog shit. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, well, well, things get better as they go along. That's that's the the big thing is like oh, I yeah. I like watching all the old things um, mm-hmm. that I've done just because you can see how I've progressed as a filmmaker and just a creator in general. You know, which actually, uh, I, there was a question I was going to ask you earlier. You had mentioned that you have written and uh and filmed at some point a short film uh around the time of high school ending early college yes is that that won some sort of award Mm -hmm. in the yeah is that online somewhere is that on youtube 
It is. It is on YouTube. Yes. Uh, Great. We're gonna link it. Oh, oh my What's, God! Don't. We're gonna oh, link it. No, no. Actually, you should. I. I. That's one. I'm. I, I, I'm happy with You're it. happy with that one? Yeah, I, I am. I was about to say, if you want, I could link the first short that I ever did that I am like, oh, sorry, that. I, no, 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 do oh, it, do it. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, we just touched foots. If uh-huh. anyone's just listening and you're like, what does that mean? <laughs> that little interaction right mm-hmm. there. I have a short that I did um, that I acted on and it was the first like film acting that I ever did. And mm-hmm. I had acted on stage a bunch and I thought I was hot shit. You know, I came in, did not do well. Did not do well in this short. And I was about to say I could link that. You should, if you, you should. really wanted, to, to, if, if it was really, if you were like really like, no, don't show that. I'll show no, the thing that. No, no. I mean, uh, we. I mean, it's it's a high school production. Yeah. Well. Yeah. So it's mm-hmm. it's not, and it was done years ago. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, but no, it's mm-hmm. it's it's a cute little story. Mm-hmm. It's called High Five. Mm-hmm. High Five. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We'll we'll link it, and I I just. I don't know. It's it's fun to watch those first things. Like uh, so, the name of the thing that I did was, I don't know if I. It, I think it was called pulling strings. Okay. But notoriously, uh, I talk about it with one specific person who was on the set as chopping broccoli, because that's what I was doing. Mm-hmm. I was chopping broccoli, mm-hmm. and it was like this scene where I kind of overacted uh, a little bit because I'm a stage actor and I didn't. I was just like yeah. in film for the first time, mm-hmm. you know, so I didn't really care for my performance at all. And it was a little, a little cringy for me to watch and be like, mm, that's what I did. You know? <laughs> <laughs> that was my contribution. Did you, do you ever watch like, or have you ever seen like film of you in like high school theater productions? Yeah. Do you know what the number one thing that I hate about high school theater productions that I watch myself in? What? It's because I never move my arms. You just come out like like one of the fish from yeah. uh, SpongeBob in the uh-huh. first episode. Like, meep, 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 I played meep. I played Seymour in Little Shop of Horrors, and the whole time I'm just like, but it's painful. <laughs> I'm just imagining you as uh, one of the little characters in the Game of Life that gets put <laughs> into the car. You know, that that's how it was. Do, do, that's do, the blocking do, of our show. <laughs> moving right along uh-huh. through life through college mm-hmm. <laughs> until somebody said why don't you try moving your arms and I was like wow look at that I'm free, I'm free. <laughs> I have another means of emoting oh my gosh that's that's crazy mm-hmm. um, I yeah I, I don't know if I've watched anything that I've been in like in high school in a long time I have some of those just laying around somewhere um, but I'm wondering what I would think of myself. I'm sure that it is definitely not. Well, I mean, in your head at the, the time, you, at the time you're doing it, you're going, I got it. Yeah, for yeah. sure. For sure. This is big. Mm-hmm. Like this is, if someone's in the audience and they're watching, they're watching me. Like, there I've had, a, yeah, yeah, I've had some performances <laughs> where I felt like that, but it's like in hindsight, it's more performances like that I did later on, you know, that were like, even after college type of performances. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the big ones I think of actually uh, was Cassie was a a stage manager on it. It was a a show called Gospel, according to First Squad. Um, I saw that show. You did see that show? I did see that show, yeah. Yeah. That was uh, Chase's show, yes? That was Chase's show. I did. Yeah, Yeah. did you, what, what weekend did you see it? Oh, that was years ago, Cody. Uh, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Okay. What kind of question was that? Yeah. What I, was the date? What was the time? <laughs> I don't. I couldn't even tell you what month it was. I yeah. I was in that show, and I kind of I had this scene that was very dark and mm-hmm. very like, it was my scene. It was a weird scene to do, mm-hmm. especially being told um, as an actor that you're not allowed to give others energy in this scene. It's not a mm-hmm. transference of energy. It mm-hmm. reads like a dialogue scene, but it's very. It was Chase directed in this way of when people are crazy and big in a room, everyone else's energy in that room normalizes. Mm -hmm. They instantly just, hey, hey, it's okay. Mm -hmm. You know, they instantly come to that calm place trying to compensate Mm -hmm. for that energy difference, Mm -hmm. you know? So she was like, because of that, taking in the energy of somebody else in the room and bringing your performance down is not going to work. You got to stay up. You got to not only supply the energy at the beginning of this scene, but take it all the way through, give it to no one Mm -hmm. and just be an asshole. It's your, it's your moment. Just do it. You know, 
I said, yeah. And that was great. And that was like the first half of it. But I asked the weekend because the last weekend she gave me this note where she allowed me to turn it up past 11. Oh, um, okay. And, and it was like, it was this thing where I all, I already felt like I had done a pretty decent job, but specifically the last weekend, it was hard for certain people to watch my performance because it was a full blown panic attack talking right. about murdering this person's uh, significant other while they're like in Afghanistan waiting to go home. I remember and, the scene. Yeah. And, uh, and there was one or two people that I knew that like they suffered from panic attacks. And so they came up to me afterwards and told me that like, they were like, wow, you're really, you did a really good job because it made me very uncomfortable oh, yeah. and it made me feel exactly how it was supposed to be. But it was only that last weekend. I mean, the, the three weekends before I'm not, it's not that they were bad. It's just that it was such a revolution of a note to be able to, to, to push it. Push the gas a little. Mm -hmm. and yeah. See what comes of it. And she, she was like, I was thinking about saying this to you before, but it, uh, you know, is weird. I think it was very well timed when she said it. I don't think I would have given the right performance if she had said it before. I had to get mm -hmm. to that point first. That's yeah. interesting. Mm -hmm. No, I, I enjoyed that show. It was it was very, uh, it was very intense. It's an intense show for yeah, sure. Very intense show. Yeah. 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 Um, and I and so my good friend Noel Suchio was in that show, which is why. Noel, I, yeah. I came. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but. Noel. Hi, Noel. Hi, Noel. Is Noel in LA? He's in LA. Yeah. Yeah. I, I saw him recently. He's doing very well. Nice. Yeah. That's good to hear. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He was in that show. That was weird. We had we had uh, a character be recast like three, four times. Oh, you're kidding. And Noel was the final iteration of was he? said character. Yeah. Good for him. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Well, we we uh, there was it was is an interesting show because Chase got like what I would consider some of the best male actors in Reno at the time. Remind me who's in that show. Uh, it was... Uh, Shiree. So, yeah, Cameron Shiree, Patrick Rigelsberger, Richard McIver, uh, Brantley uh, uh, Compton. I was Brantley about to say Cooper, but it's a different mm -hmm. person. Brantley Compton. Um, Brian Alt. Um, Robert Simpson, very briefly... I'm forgetting Jesse. Wow, Jesse Richards. Oh. He was Jedi. Yeah. Oh, um, and that is a good cast. Who? Who? Am I forgetting somebody else? I feel like I. Oh no. Um. Uh, Chase's ex. Lachlan. Lachlan. That was the other person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how long ago this was. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. So yeah, the the entire cast was like what I would consider to be some of the, the like best male actors in Reno. Mm -hmm. And then there was this one role that um, was uh, kind of a, a more dim-witted role, mm -hmm. you know? Sure. Um, they're soldiers, right? Mm -hmm. Trying to represent that. And he was, uh, this role was like very Texan, I think, mm -hmm. or very Southern mm -hmm. in a lot of ways. And the first two people who played this role were both uh, combat vets, um, and oh. so that's why I think it was an interesting choice, like in hindsight as a director now, because all of these other actors, very smart, very solid choices mm -hmm. for a lot of these roles, big roles too, you know, that you don't want to necessarily have to give spelled out too much. Mm -hmm. uh, but then like having that, that kind of realism, that kind of like Sunset Boulevard type of uh, ideal of using the real person, you know interesting didn't work out both of the two actors that came one of them freaked out one day mm. um there was just like a an outburst mm. i believe his name was john maybe but that's all i'll say just the first name i'm not mm -hmm. going to say any more than that because that's a very ambiguous name right uh and uh then the second person um i think he just like had conflict issues i think his name was lang and Lang was an interesting guy, and he gave some interesting stories about about being in war. I'm sure he has. Um, that were kind of intense, for sure. He had a background. He and it, it was like he was like two, three years younger than me. Mm. Also, though, he looked about twenty years older than anyone else. And he just it's a life. yeah, that's yeah. that's really what all of that was. And he he dropped, I think, more because he had like a work schedule conflict. And then Noel came in. 
and Noel was the person who was made uh, meant to be that role. It was this very cool kind of aesthetic of like the ideal of someone who lives in the South who is not a white person who who is also acts like a hick. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Um, and I loved that, and and I love that that type of character because it does exist. You know, you you Definitely. see some bro, someone of like maybe an Asian descent, and all of a sudden they start talking. They have more guns than um, and they and they support Trump or whatever it is because it's America, and the, yeah. all those realities exist. <coughs> Sorry. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, I'm not allowed to cough on this show. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> don't you we have to record the whole thing over <laughs> <laughs> we've never done that oh, um uh, <laughs> another another project we worked on was actually the first uh thing i directed which was written by greg it's called into the dark yes yeah 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 you tell do. me about that how was your how was your experience <laughs> with that it was a fun one uh you called me up and you said hey i i've seen you work and i think you'd be a great monster and I and I said okay, <laughs> and uh, and I, I was I think that's the longest I've sat in a makeup chair, ever. It's do do we have a picture? Do you do we want to share? A, we will put a picture up. This is a classic which, picture that's which, been is it this way or that way joked about. Um, I'll put it uh, on on top of me. Okay, well it's, it's yeah right it'll here. be it'll be it'll come over uh, from this side right now. Uh-huh. Ooh, look at that. Ooh, scary. That was speaking of Noel. Th- the night we were doing that, he goes, "So what are you doing right now?" And I texted him a picture of that, and he goes, "That doesn't answer my question." <laughs> <laughs> uh, we we did that film, and um, it it was very different, but it was it was a lot of fun to do. Yeah. Um, and and I got to work with you guys quite a bit. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it was it was just a grand old time. Uh, the lead actress in that film was so terrified to even look at me, I mm-hmm. had to hide in a closet uh, yep. if she was on set because Jessica. she couldn't look at me. Yep. I Well, I made everyone not look at you. I think I put you behind a, a sheet and yeah. I was like, no one look. Uh-huh. And then I would go downstairs. I'd be eating like Chex Mix with mm-hmm. like everyone else being like, hey, what's going on? <laughs> so that was a fun one to do. It's always fun to be creepy. That's the second film that I uh, ever played somebody that was supposed to be like an ominous silent figure creature creature mm-hmm. um and i and i made of and i and i love being part of that film and i love being part of the other film but i think i may have had my fill yeah of being like the silent eerie creature yeah yeah I, I, what kind of creatures in the future if you were offered a oh. creature role if somebody just came out if if you had your pick of the litter what kind of creature would you want to be oh i think it'd be fun to um you know, one of those like Twilight Zone villains, like somebody like shows up in a suit mm. and says like, "Oh, I have a deal for like, you." I'm the devil. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, so you're a puppeteer, but you don't have an audience. Hmm. Well, mm. I have a special puppet that you can. It's not Twilight Zone episode, <laughs> but you know, it's just a man in a briefcase that has like uh, has all the answers, but has the one thing you need. But there's a twist, and the twist is you're the puppet, mm. or your lover's the puppet, and I don't know. I think I'd be fun with that. I don't know if I've seen that one. I've seen a lot of Twilight Zone episodes. That's that's not a Twilight Zone episode. Oh, that's not. You're yeah, just making it up. I'm just pitching right now, baby. <laughs> this, 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 this is, is just all me. I, I'm, I'm the mad puppet scientist or the mad puppet salesman, and I, uh, I sell puppets. This is that natural RC cola coming that's at you. Right. Smooth. Right. <laughs> Has, do people call RC cola smooth? Um, They call it bold. Smooth and delicious. I'm actually drinking one. Are you? Right now. No. <laughs> this is Ooh, water. <laughs> RC, cl- RC Clear, I mm. see. Mm. Yes, after Pepsi uh, released their clear product, RC <laughs> said, we can do that better. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> if I know one company to do it, it's RC Cola. <laughs> it's that Royal Crown Cola. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that Ryan Costello Cola. That Ryan Costello Cola. Don't mm-hmm. tell them it's called that. I'll get sued. But mm-hmm. RC has to stand for something. You said Royal Crown. Royal, uh, yeah, Royal Crown. Is I'm it pretty Royal sure. Crown? I'm pretty sure it's Royal Crown Cola. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, I only know RC Cola from Boy Scout camp, which is where they would have it, and right. I would always be like, oh yeah. And it's like not better than Coke, and but when you're in the middle of the woods, mm-hmm. and all they have is this one particular kind of soda, and you're like ten, mm-hmm. and soda is god. I had a I had a friend that worked for the Dr Pepper Seven Up bottle, or whose dad worked for the 
Seven Up Dr Pepper Bottling Company, mm-hmm. and then we would go over and be like, "Do you have any Coke?" And then we go, "We have RC." And I was like, "No, I'm good." Yeah, no, they can't. They can't drink other products. That's in there. No, like I, I, I knew someone who was a Pepsi driver or maybe a Coke driver, mm-hmm. and like part of their contract was they could drink whatever they want mm-hmm. as long as it was the product of who they worked for when they were working. Like outside, whatever. But you know, you're in a Coke truck. You come out and you're drinking a Pepsi. Looks a little weird. Do you think Pepsi is a marketing uh, ploy? Will ever adopt the phrase "Is Pepsi okay"? Do you think there's some twist to that? Because that's a that's a phrase that's very common in American culture, and I feel like there's a way to capitalize on it that hasn't been done yet. Is Pepsi okay? What do you What do you mean? Like when is when you give go me to a restaurant yeah. and you and you ask for a Coke, right? And okay, they go, I get "Is it. Pepsi okay?" Mm-hmm. And maybe there's something like Pepsi is okay. Pepsi is more than okay. Mm-hmm. I feel like there's something there that, that Pepsi is, needs to get on because I've been waiting for it. Mm-hmm. That that is a good point. That is definitely a premise that you could. It sounds a little zany. Mm-hmm. Yeah, or maybe Coke takes it. Mm-hmm. And maybe like Coke is it's, the only thing that's okay. Only Coke is okay. Only Coke is okay. <laughs> only Coke, Coca Cola is okay. <laughs> yeah, add that. Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola. The Coca-Cola makes it. The Coca-Cola really makes it legal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, even yeah. though we had that stuff in it at one point, right? Sure did. Mm-hmm. We cover that on a... Speaking of podcasts, do you mind if I shamelessly plug? Yeah, shamelessly plug everything. All right. Yeah, this is yeah. about you. Uh, so uh, Eric Olsey and I have a podcast that we do called Namely. It's where mm-hmm. we explore the origins of certain names in our culture. We have episodes on that ask the questions... Who was the real Dr. Pepper? Mm. And uh, can you go to a thousand island where you mm. can get this dressing? Why do we call things the way that they are? Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a sketch podcast. It's family friendly. Um, and it's a lot of fun to do. We have six episodes available right now. So again, that podcast is called on, Namely. On and, what? Uh, you can get it on Spotify, Apple. Uh, we are on Podbean. Uh, mm. We're on Amazon. Mm-hmm. Anywhere that you get your podcasts. Um, YouTube? Uh, not YouTube yet. But you will. But uh, I believe that is planned for the future. Yeah. Um, but it's a lot of fun, and you should check it out. It has some very fun, talented people uh, that you might recognize from our little community. Who are those people? Uh, oh, we've had we've had Libby Baki, we've had Nick Jostin, Ian Sorensen, Jared Lively, uh, Elise Van Dyne. We've had uh, many, many, many people that if I were to try to name all of them, uh, I would immediately forget a mm-hmm. hundred of them. Um, but it's a lot of fun, and uh, and you should check it out. And we're in production of season two, uh, which your friend Dan, uh, mm-hmm. who was recently on the show, uh, mm-hmm. he directed an episode for us, and it came out very well. Mm-hmm. And st- I should also st- shout out Stephen Alberti, who's a brilliant musician that did the music for our show, too. Good job, guys. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, how, how often do you release an episode? We release by season, and once we are done with the production of a season, we release weekly. Mm -hmm. Uh, So right now we are on break as we produce our second season. Um, Once, So subscribe to that however you can, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and once you start seeing episodes, you will see consistent episodes over the next six weeks. We'll link all the stuff in the description like we always do. Sounds good. Yeah, so we'll just get all that. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. (laughs) Family guy. Good, good. <laughs> I I always spell out good like that with an e. Oh, like w- a, like a Matthew G E W D, like the ch- giant cockroach from Family Guy. The good, uh, good. That's what I'm technically referencing. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Oh, Family Guy. Oh, Family Guy. That show. <laughs> Let's talk about that show. Sure. Let's talk about that show for an hour and a half. We could, mm-hmm. and then that that would be it. I'd <laughs> I'd I'd go on to American Dad, which yeah. is in my mind superior. I haven't seen enough American Dad. To... We're getting off topic here. Yeah, Cody. I... <laughs> we gotta. <laughs> I'm just saying that American Dad at first I was like not sold on, mm-hmm. and then looking at the amount of seat content that both of them have, mm-hmm. I could watch way more American Dad. Than Family Guy, but mm-hmm. I think it's because of Roger, mm-hmm. um, specifically. I feel that way about Futurama and The Simpsons. Mm. I feel like I feel like Futurama 
is a more consistent show and Simpsons has the bigger peak. Yeah. I also feel that way about Parks and Rec and The Office. Very, yeah, 100%. Well, it's it's uh, MySpace and Facebook. I mean, you know, mm-hmm. the usually mo- the most successful thing is not the first iteration. It's mm-hmm. like number two or three. Sure. Something around there yeah. that just happens to be more convenient or better in whatever way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, any other shameless self promotion that you'd like to do? Uh oh, we talked about Namely. We talked about Baskerville. Uh, look for those GLM parody shows. They're a lot of fun. If you've never been to a GLM parody show, uh, last year we did The Land Before Dinosaur Park. Mm-hmm. The year before, um, I wasn't involved, but we did Nightmare on Taylor Street. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're really, really fun, and mm-hmm. you should check them out. I believe you could see Nightmare on Taylor Street online uh, mm-hmm. if you go to Good Luck Macbeth's uh, YouTube page. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, I mean, I have a YouTube channel. I, I don't mm-hmm. update it. Uh, a lot, but I do have fun little videos on there. We'll link you yeah. and follow you and all you, that. You could take that. Um, uh, I, I'm, I'm always writing on, I'm always working on stuff. I have a screenplay that I'm working on that I'm hoping I could share soon-ish. Mm. Um, and, uh, and that's about it. What are your handles social media wise? Stay the hell away from me. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my Instagram handle you could follow me at is Write this down because it's very complicated. At Ryan Costello one. So if you want to follow maybe some things that I'm doing, and I update my Instagram so very very little, but every now and then, I, I do share uh, what I'm doing. So you can check that out, and I and I feel comfortable giving that information out. Mm-hmm. Um, but but that's about it. Cody, what are you doing right now? I know it's about me, but what about you? Uh, I'm doing the podcast. What, uh, when can when can I see it? Um, well, this podcast will most likely come out in three or four weeks. I can't wait that long. Something like that. We're probably going to actually try to put it up around the time that uh, Baskerville is put up. That's usually, Good. if we can help it, we'll put it up closer to stuff like that. You Excellent. Know? Um, well, anyway, thank you very so much for joining us. And uh, until next time, au revoir. Bye. Bye bye. Awesome. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Thanks for this was thanks fun. for coming in yeah. and shooting the breeze. You got it. Mm. This is fun. This is fun to finally do it. Yeah. We got it. <laughs>